What is up guys? Welcome to day 60. This is the second part of making that donut box. If you haven't seen day one, go back to day 59 and see that uh, before we get started here. What we've made so far is we've made the bottom box. We've got some parametric dimensions and uh, let's just continue on making the top piece, kind of looking through what my engineering flow looks like. So I know is that this top piece right here is gonna fit on top of the bottom of my box. However, since we've already done that sheet metal model, we're gonna to run into a little bit of problems when it comes to dimensioning. So I'm gonna right click and hit suppress. What that'll do for us is it'll say, okay, that command which you just did, we're gonna hold it off on pause. We're not gonna delete it, we're just gonna hold it off to the side. That way we can continue doing some other stuff first. So I'm gonna click on sketch, go on this top plane, and move with this box, to use the dimension driven by the bottom. And so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna click on use, is that keyword use, and it's gonna project that profile onto this. Now, since it's driven uh, dimension, we just wanted that box to set on the outside, so we're just gonna click on offset of all four of these sides. Oh, I clicked on just one side. There we go, offset of this square, we're gonna go outwards for a thickness of, let's just say like 1 16th of an inch, because you know, cause those cardboard boxes aren't very big. Okay, we're looking good so far. I'm not gonna do anything else, I'm not gonna delete, not gonna trim, because remember, that dimension is driven by that bottom box, so we don't want to delete any middleman of our values. We'll click on the green check mark, I'm gonna go ahead and make this part one disappear real quick. And this is what we should have so far. I'm gonna extrude both of these parts. And we're gonna go downwards with a length or depth of our height variable. because so this is gonna be the height of our box. And there we go, hit the green check mark and we're good. So now I've got my top box, I've got my bottom box, just to make sure that everything's looking okay, I'm gonna transform this real quick, meaning I'm just gonna move this down a little bit to make sure that my parametric constraints are still good. I'm gonna double click on height. Let's change height to like eight inches and click the check mark. That looks great. That both are gonna change together, but, and we'll see if I can see, zoom in here a little bit. This is length of six inches and this is length of six and an eighth of an inch. So everything's looking good. Okay. Now, if I unsuppress that sheet metal model, we should get some errors. And that's because sketch two is referenced off of before the sheet model. So all we need to do then is move this down and everything is happy and good to go. Okay, I'm gonna take my box bottom and I'm gonna hide that real quick and we have just the top here. We're gonna to go to that sheet metal model again, and instead of the this top piece, we are going to take away, so the part we're gonna use is that part, and those faces we're gonna exclude, it's gonna be the bottom and this back side. What are we gonna bend? Well, I think we're gonna bend all these top edges right here. Hit the green check mark. Let's actually make sure this cut. Yep, yeah, okay. Hit the green check mark and we have the top of our box. So let's go in and let's check to make sure everything's okay. Let's rename this part box top. And both should be active now. Okay. When we use that sheet metal function, an interesting tab up here on the right pops up. This is a view of what that sheet metal or our cardboard box metal model looks like. And so model one, there's model two, so there's my top and my bottom. And this will show us where our bends are and where our cuts are when making this. Okay, now the only thing really is gonna make our box look a little more realistic. So I'm gonna assign or edit the appearance to it. Let's give it a brownish color, same thing appearance let's get a brownish color and 
and make sure everything is looking good so far. Okay. The only thing we need to do now is throw in at some of our animations. So I'm going to click on the plus sign here. Let's go to create assembly. And let's insert the box for the video. And our donut for video. Okay. Our donut is going to be fastened to each other. Let's get our top and bottom pieces. So this face is going to go on to that face. So we got our donut so far. And like every every single model we do, when it comes to assembly, you're going to find the one piece that is not going to move, and that's going to be our bottom, and we're going to fix it. Meaning we don't want it to go anywhere. All right. We're going to do Revolute, because I want the top of our box to Revolute. So I'm going to click on, make sure I get this right, get the right face in here. There we go, at the bottom. Let's try to get this right. There we go, hold on control. And I want this top edge right here. Hey, there we go. Click play. My box is going the correct direction, but we now need to fix our limits. Our limits are going to be, let's say we have, we can play real quick, 0 to 180 should be right on the queue. Hey, hey, look, there we go. We've got our box now doing the, the necessary motions we want it to. It's not going through itself. It's not going the wrong direction. We can go ahead and open our box and start to shove some donuts in there. Okay, we're going to do something a little bit different though, and I like this. We're going to put our first donut in there. So we're going to do fasten. We're going to fasten the bottom of our donut right in there. Remember, this has a preview. This is only interacting with those two parts. It forgot the top part. Well, not really. There we go. We're outside of preview and we're good to go. Now you could bring in more donuts and throw them in there. However, what we can do then is instead of that, we can use a linear pattern. We want to repeat this donut in what direction? Well, the direction of to the other end of the box. So we have the donut top and bottom and the direction of the other end of the box. The distances between each instance, well, if we remember back to our donut, had a thickness of 1.5 inches. And let's see how many donuts we can shove in there. It should be four. And there we go. Hit the green check mark and we're good to go. Now, if I was an engineer through my engineering brain, I would notice that there is some empty space in here. Now, if we had done static constraints, we would then run back to our design and have to potentially re-edit the whole thing. Instead, we can just change the variables that we need to. So we see the height is a little too tall and the depth is a little bit too much. So what we're going to do then is we're going to go back to our box and change the height. I believe we're going to do, let's do five inches and our depth Let's do five inches. And that looks a little bit tighter. That looks good to me. Okay. Could we go a little bit more? Probably. Let's see if we go down to four and a quarter. For our height. And our depth is four and or four and three quarters, sorry. And that was looking like one tightly packed box of donuts. Okay, what if and how could we then take this and do some other things with parametrics? We will follow up with the last video because we're right at that 10 minute mark. 
and I'm looking forward to uh, showing some small final details we can then take of how can we take our solid models and then produce some 3D prototypes from this using Onshape. Okay guys, sit tight and I'll have last video up here soon. Take care.